Welcome to the Bronx Latino History Project. My name is Stephen Payne, librarian and archivist at the Bronx County Historical Society, and I'm here again with Aviva Argote for part two of her oral history. I'm also here with uh, Lydia, and I'll ask you to introduce yourself in a second. Lydia, and um, I also have the uh, honor of my wife, Rachel Horowitz, joining me, who's not on camera. Um, but she's here too. So Lydia, if uh, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, say a little about yourself, your earliest life, uh, and we'll go from there. Sure. Um, hi, I'm, my name is Lydia Gotem, and uh, Aviva Gotem here. And um, so just hearing about what's happening in this um, uh, history, oral history, uh, it's, it's brought back memories uh, of my, my brother Danny and meeting Marsha and meeting folks that they worked with at Lincoln Hospital. Um, I was probably in my teens, but I had a job at, there used to be an AMP accounting office across the street from Lincoln Hospital. Sure. And so I was hired there to do billing, uh, but I was excited because at lunchtime I used to run out and meet Danny and, and Marsha. And most, most of the time, Marsha and I had lunch with Bruce so I would hear them talking. I wasn't very aware, I have to say, of... She would give you up tickets, right? Yeah, I, I would get... Um, Lincoln Hospital had a fantastic uh, luncheonette, <laughs> and, and if, if Marsha could eat there, you know, th that was pretty good. Um, and so she, she would save some, some tickets, that they would buy tickets, and that would buy you a plate of food. <laughs> And I'm sitting there with a doctor and with Marsha, and, you know, so I was feeling pretty good, although I have to say that, you know, I knew something was going on, but I didn't realize how, how much they worked and how much they put their hearts into what they were doing. And that's the, the hospital, actually, that I was born in. Myself and my, my brother, I have two other brothers that were born there also. My Danny and my older siblings were born in, in Harlem. Sure. So, um, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's nice to remember, and, and uh, the, the, it, I remember that it wasn't a fancy office, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't fancy, but the people there were so, they, they, they enjoyed working with each other, it was so much fun for them, and um, so, you know, yeah, so I, I wasn't uh, very much, you know, hearing I would hear what they would say, but it wasn't at the time what I was, you know, involved in or thinking about. Sure, sure. And you lived in the neighborhood still. At, at yes, that time? yes. Yeah. I was living in um, what they call the St. Mary's Project. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. So we had we we moved there, and by the time we moved there, well, Danny still was with us, and then he he got called, you know called to the army. But um, so yeah, we were living there in St. Mary's Project, and it was within walking distance. Yeah. 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 So you know, we used to. I used to walk to work, and, and Danny, and, and I don't know where Marsha was living at the time, but oh, I think well, down here. I mean, oh, oh West End. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. Was, right. Right. That's right. She, she was going to school right here. Right. Because she. she yeah. To me, Manhattan was a foreign place. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So the first time I, I came down to to Mar Marsha's apartment and Danny, I, I I just thought it was fabulous. You know, West End Avenue was a beautiful building, so different from the Bronx. Yeah. yeah. So it um, it was it was nice that she was living on her own, and I felt that so exciting. <laughs> yeah. And she was going to Barnard. You know, little did I know that I would wind up at Columbia myself <laughs> many yeah. years later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah. So those those were um, days that were that were nice, but things were not. Uh, things were not. Things were getting a little bit. Um, in 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 our community, things were falling apart. Yeah, yeah. There, there was a there was a lot of things happening that was bringing neighborhoods down, and so that's like the end of the '60s. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you know, so my I, I did go to junior high school at, at uh, Clark Junior High School, which was on 149th Street. It had, I was one of the first the first class of students. It, it was brand brand new. Yeah, and so, um, and it was the first time that we were allowed to go out for lunch, uh, and so it was, we felt, you know, and then I went to Morris High School. Oh, okay, you went to Morris High School. Yes, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Right. so I graduated okay. from there. By then, you know, I had married and had my daughter, sure. so, uh, yeah, 
So it never went back to the Bronx. Yeah, yeah. How, how was Morris High School for you? Morris High School, I, you know, to be honest, there were, when I think about it now, I realize how they took advantage. Mm. Um, I can tell you a couple of things that, that happened. Uh, I wasn't a, 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 like an A student, mostly Bs, but I felt that I wasn't being, at now when I think about it, the, the classes were kind of even low, below our grade, our grade um, um, understanding. But that would put us in, uh, and I would say us, was a group of kids, and some of them couldn't read. Mm -hmm. you know, some of them, this is mm -hmm. high school. So I, I was able to read, and I was able, so I used to feel frustrated. But they would do things like um, uh, put us in a, a, a room and, and figure out puzzles and things to see how fast we can put you know, pegs in, in round holes or square holes. And when I asked what it was for, you know, teachers said, oh, that's if you, in case you get a job in a factory. Yeah. And then I had my the high school counselor, and, and I'll say this to mention my good friend Joe McCord, who passed away last yeah. year. He was, a, he was in, in the same high school, African-American family who lived above us, and we became very close friends. I came out of the counselor's office crying, and he said, what happened? I said, I said that I wanted to do something after high school, you know, get a good job, or, and she said that I'll probably get married and have like 10 kids. That was devastating. I know, yeah. That was devastating. So he said, don't pay attention to her. You just, yeah. you know, that yeah. because he, he had a little bit more teaching from his parents yeah. As, yeah. as a black person. Yeah. You know, he was even more, you know, probably more abuses were thrown to him and he knew how to let it not, you know, to uh, let it bounce off. But, yeah. And he walked with me, we walked around and around till I calmed down. And he says, you, you don't, you know, you don't pay attention to what they say. You, you, you know, you're smart, you, you know, you can do whatever you want. You know, go talk, I used to talk to his mom a lot. So um, those are the, the negative things. Being in the school, you know, I love the school. It's a beautiful building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I, I excelled at basketball. <laughs> I was very good at basketball, and um, and so my training there became uh, accounting, which is what I followed through, sure. yeah, and, and and wound up as director of the budget operations here in, in, at Columbia yeah. in the physics department. So I, I would have liked to have known a little bit more then, and I don't know where I would have wound up now. Yeah. But but that was good, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. I I didn't listen to that that person, you know, that said. I, I just felt terrible, and yeah. that's how. I don't know how many times I've heard stories like that. I did an oral history with. He's a puppeteer for Jim Henson, uh, for the Muppets, for you know. He, 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 he and he's still he's still making puppet shows. But his high school teacher, at, I think uh, maybe a band of Childs, I forget. But it's one of the wrong high schools. Told him the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you should take up a trade. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you know. So many people, fortunately, don't listen to that, but I think of all the people who yes. were discouraged about that. So much wasted potential. A lot. I think my we were talking about economic classes, and I and I for me economic classes was literally uh, learning how to put a diaper on a baby, learning how to make the bed, how how to fold the uh, pillow sheet inside out, and you grab the pillow and flip it, and then they would say, let's see how fast you can do it. But you know, but I wasn't thinking, why am I doing this? Yeah. Or yeah. And, and my parents were go to school, stay in school, stay in school, but nothing beyond that, you yeah. know. So I, I did what the, you know was told. But I remember thinking, you know, why are we learning about babies? You yeah. know, it, it's like yeah. it was it was crazy. Yep. And so, but <laughs> Morris High School did have grades where, what I would say maybe they had smarter students who knew that might maybe have more potential. I don't know if because I was Hispanic or they just, you know. Were you in, Were you put into a specific group yes. within your grade? Yes. How, how, what was that? Well, well, it's, it, it was either, you, you know, from, you would go like say, 8-1, 8-2, 8-3, 8 8-1 were the smartest yeah. students, 8-2, you know. So I was at the end, kind of, you yeah. know. So, and I think I kept doing that. That was in junior high school, but in, um, in high school, I think they had, they, they put groups together. I mean, there was, I remember some kids in my class had ambition, yeah. which, you know, one of them said, you know, 
oh, I want to be, a, 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 you know, an, an actress on stage. And, and some of them had, you know, one wanted to be a doctor. So there was some people, you know, some young girls. I don't remember having very close friends there. It was a school that had a lot of cliques. Mm -hmm. And if you belonged to one gang, they would fight. You know, there was a lot of fights. And, and um, you know, talking about substitute teachers, uh, earlier, we uh, when we had a substitute teacher, the, the kids would misbehave. I was always afraid of getting in trouble, so I never went that way. So I was more to myself, but I was picked on sometimes, and I tried to defend myself in that sense. But if it was a rough school, yeah. So it, it uh, you know, so this is like during 1960, 61. Uh, yeah, and uh, but you know, then I would hear from people saying, "Oh, Morris High School." I, it's such a wonderful high school, and mm. it was earlier where I heard that even politicians, I think Koch, they went, they went, some of these, they went to Morris High School. Also, Morris High School gave uh, free English lessons. A lot of people talked about taking oh. English lessons, you know. But one of the things I was proud of when I um, that about Morris, it was that when I had to call to get transcripts from high school when I was coming to Columbia, and when I called and I said, I don't know if this is possible, but you know, I was a student there in 1963, um, and she said, and you want your transcripts? I said, yes. She said, you thought we didn't have them, huh? <laughs> so I had a good laugh yeah. and, and they had it. I, I never looked at the wow. transcript, but that was that was amazing to yeah. me, you know, that, that she laughed That's like, you great. know, you're, yeah, surpri yeah, 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 you're right. surprised. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of high school don't, don't, yeah. don't even have them. Right. So I, you know, because that was the transcripts they were ha asking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other problem when I was here at Columbia, that the Mars High School uh, robotics class beat out the Columbia computer wow. science three years in a row, <laughs> or two years in a row. So wow. I said, I went to your high school. You know? <laughs> Yeah, so so that was fun. that was that was. Fun. I don't know if they're still doing the, the but we didn't have robotics, of course, yeah. you know. But yeah. when I heard oh Morris High School's competing, I said Morris High School, I was like surprised, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm very proud of them. Yeah. Were there were there any after school programs there at all when you were there? Not that I went to, not that I remember. Yeah. Um, good question. Uh, yeah, I, they might have had, but was, you know, I, I, I don't remember if they had. I'm sure they did, but yeah. yeah, it wasn't something that, I had, I went straight home after school. Yeah, they might have started phasing out some of them even already by that point, because in the 50s, actually a lot of the, a lot of the big black musicians were living the Bronx, went to North High School, and one of the reasons that they became so proficient so young is they could still take one. Oh yes, oh. I was able to. Yes, I, when I was in junior high school, I joined uh, uh, the band, and I, I was assigned the violin. Oh, that's how you got it. Was through school. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, so, so, uh, yeah, we used to bring out instruments home to practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, I went to a Texas public school. Not a chance. To meet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you don't even know if they have instruments yeah, now. Exactly. Yeah. Half the time we did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So and all of us would take off, you know, take our our uh, instruments home. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Well, yeah. When that changed, I mean, at least as far as Bronx music history goes, you can track because then then things like hip hop have to develop because the instruments aren't aren't yeah. there anymore. So right. People have to improvise. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what we were talking about all yesterday about being creative. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. On the rooftops of the Bronx. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. What, what would y'all do on the rooftops? My my older brother, who, who that you know, so my older brother would be my my older brother, my sister, and Danny were the three oldest siblings. They would improvise with with playing. So for instance. Uh, they would they would find old bed posts that the people would throw out the uh, the bed the bedding bed, and they would take the top the knob and then you know cut lines across and then put uh, string and use it as tops and, and, he, and, and he said file the screw yeah they, they, they the would they, they, yeah they filed the screw on the bottom so that it could spin yeah, exactly. and they would have these kind of contests you know who can knock who out another thing he said was that you know with umbrellas yeah. they would take the the um, the, uh, 
skeleton, the, the what spokes, is it? The, I don't know. The, yeah. yeah, the uh, the metal spokes, yeah. and and work it out and make them into bow and arrows. Now, so you take you take the long part and make it into the bow, and yeah. then the short one and make it into the arrow. Now it sounds very dangerous to me. Yeah. <laughs> So I'm glad I wasn't in they that group. Well, he said they make kites too. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they oh, would, yeah, yeah. So they would, they would take, the yeah, yeah, they would, they would tie the the bows and then you know make kites, and that was always something I remember at, at home with my brothers taking old uh, towels and uh, you know or, or sheets, and my mother would get upset. That, that's something I do remember because that was the about. Skates, the, the, the oh yes, yeah, so the box dirt was, yeah. right. So we were talking about um, you know we we played in the streets. Yeah, yeah, sure. We didn't have any park nearby and uh, and and we were you know everything was playing out in the streets and um, I the girls would be jumping rope or skating or bike riding and um, so my my mother always liked to buy good things at last so I you know I got Chicago skates at the time which were were you know expensive maybe about 7.95 or something but um, I come home from school one day and I'm looking for my skates and I see the top part and no wheels and it was my brother Sam who's a year older than me had taken it apart to build a scooter so what they would do is they would take the uh, the wooden crates that, that were outside stores and they would you know, get a two by one, cut them up and get the, the long two by four, put the skate, the wheels underneath, and then hammer in the box. Yeah, yeah. So I was hysterical crying, and he said, so, No, no, I'll give you a ride. And the thing is that riding in the box, I was about five or six, <laughs> they would crash into everything. So it wasn't a lot of fun. At first, I thought it was going to be fun. Oh, he said, No, no. <laughs> So those were our playing days, uh, living on Jackson Avenue, sure, sure. and um, and so, yeah. But my older brother had more, you know, they had different experiences. But I do remember my brother Danny going to the roof and and with the kites. Yeah. So you love that, yeah. as opposed to a park, which yeah. is safer. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. And what did my parents, you know, I it, it's when we think about it now, you know, it's it's uh, it was things that, that we just took for granted. Um, stick ball, they would play stick ball. Um, cars would would actually, you know, there, there was no speeding. Yeah. You know, the once in a while car they would come by, they would stop and honk, and we they, the kids get out of the way, the car would go. There was no, you know, uh, there's no bad things going back and forth yelling and we we hardly saw any cars um, and uh, and there was you know, things going back and forth about the kites yeah. my dad would talk about on the string they take little pieces of broken glass and he said that they would make their own glue with flour he'd always like steal a cup of flour yeah and then they put little pieces of glass so that when you're on your roof and they're on their your their roof if you could make your kite meet theirs you can cut their <laughs> yeah <laughs> You just got their string. <laughs> they weren't Legos. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't. <laughs> I, yeah, um, and um, yeah, that, that's true. They, they, they would do those yeah, things. Yeah. I mean, when, I, when my brother said about the bow and arrow, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh. <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, that, that sounds very... Um, but but we, I, my brother Daniel always said that you know playing in the streets was, was good for us growing up as we saw what was happening more with kids and the computers and but we were out all day and you know it, usually at school school days we couldn't stay out very late but my parents just you know we got out whatever energy talk yeah. about yeah. Hassan Rafa that has this energy um, and during the summer it was morning noon you know and evening. My father had a particular whistle that we could hear no matter if we were two corners away. <laughs> Danny always spoke about this. Um, and it was like, we gotta go home, we gotta go home, you know? Not, not that, you know, they, they would, you know, they were very, uh, it, was, it was a very um, quiet family kind of thing, you know? We, we, we didn't make a lot of noise at home because I think now what my mother used to have was migraines. So they would say, oh, you know, don't, my grandmother would be there, she, she, you know, because we, we had a very long hallway in our apartment. Sometimes we put our skates on and we skate. So we don't know the neighbor downstairs, you know. <laughs> so um, as my, my niece and her brother would play basketball. All right, we had a long hallway too. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, yeah, and the long hallway. The, and uh, I know the neighbors would, yeah. you know, sometimes say, please, not so early. <laughs> Was there a community center or anything like that at the St. Mary's houses? Um, you know, at, at that time, no. That I, I don't know if they, because when, when we lived in Jackson Avenue, we had to move because they were knocking those buildings to build the St. Mary's. But so my mother was told, you know, that she would get an application to move back. And so we were moved to Bruckner Boulevard projects. Uh, I remember the 1333 Bruckner Boulevard. I had to learn how to spell it. Um, and so when they were built, we did get an apartment. And the reason was my father was a custodian at a school, local school called PS 124. And so they wanted to be in the same area that they were familiar with, yeah. you know? So uh, we moved there, and uh, yeah, so I don't remember a community, yeah. I, I was a teenager by then, I was 12, I was going to Clark Junior High School, and then 13, so we would just, the kids hang out, listen to our radio, transistor radio. Sure, sure. <laughs> and, um, you know, so, uh, but it was still uh, a good group of kids, but things started to uh, get really bad. Um, so that's when my parents decided they would, you know, my father retired at 70 and then they moved to Florida, which they weren't too happy about. And then um, they moved back to Puerto Rico. And then in Puerto Rico, they came back to New York and they wound up in the area that they first lived in on the, uh, on the east side of Harlem. Yeah, so it was the, it's like they did a full circle. Yeah, yeah, big, big full circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah my mother was like, well, she was happy because that was the church that she used to go to. It was right there in the 110th in Central Park. Okay, okay. And so she missed that church, but she literally uh, was very young when she joined the church. She was pregnant with my brother Mario. Oh. So that's 80 something years. Oh, when they left <laughs> yeah. East Harlem, when I was yeah, 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 yeah. So when they, you know, when they, when my father retired, when you know, even from the Bronx, St. Mary, she used to come to the church, oh, okay. so she, take she the sub. Yeah, yeah. She was, she was the pianist in the in the in the church, and also the choir person, you know. And so, so coming back, she was, she spent. Did she take you down there on Sundays or no? Yeah, Just, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. She, we were uh, taken to church. Yeah. But yeah. you came all the way down the minute, all the yes. way down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. on Sundays. Because yeah, during yeah, the right. week there was another little church in the Bronx okay. that she would go to. But on Sundays was a big church thing. And the church was very crowded and very, you know, it's very, it's like very few people. Yeah. You know, she, she, um, she was going there to the church till 90, she was, she died in 97. Just before she died, she yeah. was still going to church. She would walk from uh, yeah. the, uh, she lived in the, um, uh, Fifth Avenue, I don't know the name of the buildings now, but it was these buildings that were built for Section 8. Okay, okay. So she was able to get in there with my father, and so she would go to church there to, you know, yeah. Wow, wow. So she went to that church for Ever. a very long time. Yeah, since the 30s, oh, yeah, since yeah, the 30s. Yeah. yeah, and she was, they celebrated her 75th year at the church. Danny was there. Yeah. You were there. Yeah. Yeah, you were there. And um, so that was a community, and so, you know, but yeah, us kids, we didn't have community centers sure, that, sure. that I yeah. can remember at that time. Sure. Yeah. Most of your friends were on, lived on the same street? Or um, I had, yeah, I, I had, yeah, most of my friends lived in the area. Um, some didn't live in St. Mary's, but lived in the buildings like off um, uh, Forest Avenue, okay. Cordwell. Sure. But we knew each other like from school or just from hanging around the park. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, a lot of my friends, you know, we, we never kept in touch. Yeah. yeah. Once, once I, uh, I moved to Florida with my parents, yeah. So, yeah, but um, it was a nice place growing up. Back in the 50s, I think the late 50s and, you know, up until the late 60s. Yeah. Yeah. What were some of the first um, things that you remember thinking that maybe the neighborhood wasn't the same? Drugs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of my friends got into drugs. Um, this is high school, or this uh, high, uh, right, after, right around yeah. high school. Yeah. 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 So I was 16, 15. Yeah. yeah. And um, what were the drugs then? Well, there was smoke, marijuana. Okay. 
or take pills. And then there were the heavy, the, the ones that would take heroin, believe it or not, at that time, they, they were, you know, you never saw them out in the street. Yeah. They would be in buildings, oh. hi hiding, yeah. hiding, yeah, yeah. and people called them all kinds of names, yeah. you know. And so I was afraid of them, you know, because it was something strange to see. Um, you know, in, in 63, of course, you know, I was in high school when Kennedy died. I remember all of us, you know, crying. And, and, and but right after that, you know, because mm. I remember Kennedy saying exercise, you know, he wanted to bring exercise yeah. to school and things. But yeah, so around that time, more and more kids started getting caught up. And, uh, and then the heavier drugs, and I think at that time more heroin. Um, I worked at a, de a department store called Hearns Department Store. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I remember one evening, uh, it was a very, it was 149th Street and 3rd Avenue, and the L, the subway L was there. And that was a dark space, you know. And coming out at night, I used to be afraid because there were a lot of kids on drugs, you know, asking for money. And that's when I said, you know, this is not, this is not, I think I quit actually. Uh, I was already, uh, you know, doing, you know, work, part-time work right after, you know, high school. But, um, yeah, that's about the time that, that things started to go down. And then I was shocked when I came back, because I didn't live in Puerto Rico, when I came back in the 70s. I went up to the Bronx and I was just devastated, yeah. devastated. But uh, people that I know of, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't connect with anyone, but there was one person that saw me one day here in Columbia, and I used to be called Penny. And he said, Penny, and I, I was shocked, you know. But he was a taxi driver, he had just stopped. Oh. <laughs> and he saw me and we just said hi and things. and. and uh, yeah, that was, yeah. I'm, I actually need to uh, change the battery. Well, okay, okay, when you ask about Community Center, what I'm thinking now is that my father working at the school, PS124, he would go in on Saturdays to clean and, and uh, would take us, and my brothers would play basketball and bring friends, he, you know, he was told, and, and I was learning how to ride a two-wheeler. So I remember my father taking me to ride a two-wheeler. And I would just play. While my father, at that time, the school was won by coal. He used to, you know, put coal into the, uh, the uh, what do you call it? The burn incinerator. And uh, so, and my father loved his job. And so he, you know, and that's one of the schools, literally, that. Uh, that you can go and it was clean, the bathrooms were clean. Um, the, well, he had like three retirement parties. From the, par the parents association, the, the principal with his family and the teachers. And my mother said, gee, I didn't know that you liked you so much. I said, everything was warm when we went in, in, in the winters. The windows were clean, you know. He used to get on, the school was two stories maybe, it wasn't, yeah. and so he, I would see him get up with these uh, hooks outside the window and, and clean the windows. Yeah. I mean, these are all things that he did, and the families loved him because, um, you know, he was, if there were leftover things from the lunchroom, sometimes he, it's like he started this, you know, here's a bag of, of some apples that were left. Here's a bag of, and so the mothers were so grateful to that, you know. So, so, but you know, as far as like having a place to play, I remember my brothers more than anything because I have my older sister. She was uh, with her friends, and um, so, so that was an area that my on weekends my father would, you know, let the boys, you know. But um, it's so funny because then they did that at Bay Street. So oh. my whole growing up, my dad and my uncles all would play at the gym at our school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used yeah. to go, yeah, right, on Saturdays, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is one thing they treasured. I mean, yeah, they talked right. about it for years. <laughs> yeah. You know, they would get together. Remember going to play basketball? My brothers were kept in touch with their friends. Uh, sure. Yeah, for years and years. You know, Danny would get calls from friends from Florida, from you know that they, they they you know just kept in touch. Yeah. That was that was that's beautiful to see because my older brother still is in touch with some 
of their friends from the Bronx at that time. And so that we're talking like early 50s. Because, yeah, my brother was born 38. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so that's, that's one thing. Um, and, um, you know, my, my experience is like in well, Puerto Rico, um, when I went there, uh, I, my grandmother used to come and stay with us part of the year and she would go back to Puerto Rico part of the year. And so I would ask her stories about Puerto Rico and her growing up there. Because I always was uh, impressed that my grandmother would come home from school and she, she would be reading the Daily News. And I would say, how did you learn how to read? You know, yeah. like, and or she would read the Spanish newspaper, whichever one was there. And she, so she told me, you know, that she was there during the Spanish-American War. Yeah. And she lived in a little town called uh, Toa Arca, I think it was. And it was a, it was a town very poor, uh, houses on stilts, you know, yeah. They had a river, and uh, she would help her mother, they were little kids at the river washing sheets. Yeah. Like her mother washed sheets to, 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 take, uh, to make a little money. Um, their father didn't live with them, so he had, you know, so um, she would say that when that war happened, her mother would hide them underneath cupboards, and her younger sister, she would tie a thing around her, so, because the soldiers would come in, and they would, she said she remember hearing them walk, yeah. and they would do horrible things to young, yeah, so, you know, the, the, the mother was taken care, and, um, but you know, she so after the uh, the war and there was if you, you know the history of Puerto Rico where they want the U.S. wanted them to you know drop the yeah. Spanish and yeah. be English and, and they they fought Everything back. Was the yes, so, right. Yeah. So they fought back. I have to say, but my my grandmother said that at school they would teach them, but the, the teachers were English, always from the U.S. They were Americans, I should say, um, and so. Their Spanish were horrible. Since their Spanish was horrible, but they were forced to read and learn how to, you know, in English. So I don't know. She got maybe up to fifth grade, but that, they taught well because, you know, very, very um, limited. I'm sure, but she could never get cheated at a supermarket. She, well, you know, not that there were machines, but she would count her change and she would add in a, in a bag of a grocery bag, she would say the potatoes were this, about 50 cents, and she says, okay, yeah, I got the right change, you know? Yeah. So it always impressed me because I always felt that she was like, you know, one of these women that were brought up in the little town. And and, and the fact is that, that she then moved to San Juan and with an uncle that wasn't a very nice uncle, but her mother thought she would get better educated there yeah. and this is a mother who never went to school mm -hmm. but and, and my grandmother's oldest brother was the, the recorder he would record what each of them were born their names so they had this book so my grandmother is, is in San Juan and meets this young man who later becomes her husband and my mother you know so it's like my, my brother one time said you know we were we get together in family gatherings and it's like 35 of us yeah. And my brother would look at my mother and father and say, because of them, we're all here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, um, yeah, so it was, it was a good experience to hear my grandmother's story. And, um, and my mother, you know, was born there and also, the, you know, she learned classical piano. Because her, her aunts were, were I, I guess it, we would have said middle class then, but uh -huh. she had an aunt that, that had a store in San Juan that did dresses, wedding dresses. The, the women were very skilled. One of the aunts worked as a court stenographer, and one of them worked in a factory, mm -hmm. the younger one. So somehow, you know, mix and match, you know, from poor country, no, no reading, to, you know, working in a courthouse. My mother, you know, had a good, pretty good life. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So um, even though she would, you know, just say, go to school, stay in school, there was, you know, I wish that, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So. My experience in Puerto Rico, when I lived there, was, uh, it, it, for me, it was a learning experience. Because we were born here, and, and my father, from Cuba, we heard very little of, the, of their lives there, yeah. you know? So, going there was through my grandmother that I learned 
a lot of, of her history uh, and how we all wound up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not when we when when we came back to the Bronx. Okay, we I were see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Living in the Bronx, we were still young kids. Yeah. Know, so that wasn't happening. But but my brother Mario could say the people that he knew. That sure. Became, you know, uh, um, artists. You know, playing Mongo Santa Maria. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he knew him, and and uh, wow. Yeah, I mean, they they knew each other very well. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think. Even for a period of time, Arsenio Rodriguez lived in the Bronx. I forget where he lived. Maybe on Tintin Avenue or I forget, maybe Trinity Avenue. I forget, but... We live on Trinity Avenue. Yeah. Um, I don't recall the name, actually, but my brother probably knows. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Really, really... Uh... Must have been like in the 70s, maybe? Well, the no, he's, he's more like the... 30s, 40s. Oh, so he's an older. Okay, yeah, yeah, older, so, so, older yeah, guy. Yeah. But one of one of the most like prolific Afro-Cuban okay. musicians at that time, and a lot of people, yeah. you know, drew on on him. But now but yeah, really wonderful musicians. With all of musicians, the Afro, you know, ch uh, sound, and he loves their the the stories they tell. Yeah, the, yeah. The the, the the um he always you know starts off telling me, you know, some beautiful lyric from his song. You know, and uh, he, he, both him and my brother Danny had poetic yes. Uh, yes. potential. Yes. You know, they they wrote beautiful things. They they remember. You know, my brother could still say Henry Wadsworth's you know poems, and I so, and I can't remember. <laughs> and the, you know, he goes like I, only the, the one with the he's the the child is leaning on his mother. He can hear a heartbeat, and then he continues with it. You know. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, um, but. Yeah, the, the the early 50s that my brother Mario was growing up with Pacheco and there was a lot of other friends of theirs that, that went into the record business. Or, but that was his time there. Sure, my time sure. was growing a little little. But coming back to the South Bronx, that was a, a different uh, era than the 60s. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But I didn't listen to a lot of Spanish music at home. My mother didn't play, you know, songs because she was the religion yeah yeah but she yeah. would like to play her you know her she did like uh like i'm trying to think of some of the old you know songs i'm trying to think of the uh artists i can't think of it now but she would listen to very melodic waltzes and sure, things like that sure. so it was it was no uh, Pacheco. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what about your father? Did he listen to he loved, music at all? No, he he loved hearing it. You yeah. Know, when we would then play records, he, he loved the music. Yeah, and yeah. In Puerto Rico, I got back to. This is what I was telling my brother the other day. I said, you know, I love the Aguinaldos, the, the old traditional folk song. Yeah, sure. That I never heard of her. So some of my friends said uh, that if they ever see this, they. They grew up with that. Yeah. So they were very in tune to that. I have a very good friend in Anna. We met in Puerto Rico. She's more of that group. I see, I see. Even yeah. though she says, yeah, you know, I like doo-wop and things. But she's more of her, you know, listening to uh, the the the, uh, the song, the uh, the singers that sang ballads. Mm. Um, and, you know, Cheo, uh, Cheo Feliciano. And so when I went to Puerto Rico, I... I started listening to more. Sure. So, so I like both. Sure, sure. Yeah, and Absolutely. And I certainly did dance a lot. So yeah, yeah. Both, you know, salsa and, and whatever whatever rock and roll was yeah. going on. But <laughs> I did <danced> Celindy. <laughs> did Did you dance uh, in Manhattan at all, or mostly in the Bronx when, when you were dancing? When I came back uh, to New York, I, I there was discotheques. Oh, sure, sure, and yeah. And there were there were the discotheques were here in Puerto Rico. We went to. Believe it or not, when I was there, I worked at J.C. Penney, and they would throw us a batch uh, during the holidays. They wow. hired an orchestra <laughs> from Puerto Rico, not like Eddie Palmieri, but the people that knew. And we, we had to go in gowns. It was like going to the Met, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and we would we would have tables, and we would dance. Yeah. Yes, I danced a lot of salsa, cha cha. You know, merengue, which is Dominican. Sure. But, you know, we, we all enjoy the, the different styles. 
Uh, that that went on for a while. J.C. Penney, the the owner, the, the, when I met him. The, he came to Puerto Rico because it was the first J.C. Penney store built there. Mm. So it was a big to do. And I still have. I'll show you my chain, a gold chain with a little ruler, because he always said follow the golden rule. And uh, so he come to say hello, see the store. You know, he was very happy. And so, yeah, we had uh, these balls that, we, that he would throw for us. Wow. It was, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. And here, I, you know, I was already a little older, going to sure. my 30s. But I would go with friends to, to dance clubs. Uh, either it, it was uh, La Magonette, which was all Spanish, mm. uh, you know, music. Uh, and then oh, different dance areas. They were very nice. I don't know if there's any now. Sure, that, sure. That people go to. <laughs> <laughs> in the Bronx, I mean, there were lots, lots of, lots of a uh, dance halls. Oh yeah, 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 all over the place. Yes, um, yeah. So um, yeah, so that that was my experience in, in my youth of of dancing and and having fun. It sure, was, was, sure. Uh, no, no incidents. Yeah, yeah, it was nice. <laughs> So, just so I have a good sense um, of the timeline, how old were you when you left the Bronx for good? Um, 20. Okay, I see. Yeah. I see, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I, had, I, got my, I had my daughter, I was married young, at 18. Sure. And, and then I, had, I, I separated from my husband. Sure. And I, when my father says, we're going to Florida, yeah. that's when I went with him. I didn't like Florida as well because I, I couldn't get, I, I had to learn how to drive. Eventually, I learned how to drive mm. in Puerto Rico. And, um, and so while living there, my brother Danny came to visit. Uh, I think it was eight months old, maybe. <laughs> and uh, we, we wanted to meet her, and her brother was... Too. Yeah. And so my brother said, "Do you want to come back to New York? Yeah. You can come back and go back to school." Which yeah. Is what I did. I went to Boricua College. Okay. And, sure. Yes. Sure. Yeah. And that was built by with Danny and his friend, uh, the president of. Uh, a a, a, a uh, Oh. Uh, wow. Well, Vic Alicea. Oh, oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abe, yeah. Abe's in my thesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah, you mentioning yeah. Abe. Yeah. Vic Alicea. They were they were very good friends. And he encouraged me to go back to school. I came back to school. I came back with my daughter. She was 10. She didn't like New York. <laughs> it was a building, no house. I can't play outside. But she grew it's too cold. It's and cold. Cold, cold. yeah, and cold. yeah, what, yeah. No beach? <laughs> <laughs> she grew to love it. Um, she's very talented. She grew up to, uh, wound up going to the High School of Music and Art. Oh, wow. And she then went to RIT, which is... Uh, Rochester Institute of Technology for Photography. Oh, cool. And then she traveled and traveled with uh, photographers uh, through Europe, went to uh, the Philippines, did a all traveling until she wound down meeting her husband. Wow. <laughs> and my grandkids, my, her, her daughter is following very much in her footsteps, very talented. Uh, and, um, and so, yes, yeah, she, she wound up teaching. She wanted to teach art. It's been hard to, for her to get a, a teaching uh, job in that field, but she's sure. worked in school. Sure, and sure. Been, you know, in schools with, with kids and mostly doing art. She's, it's a lost uh, uh, curriculum. Oh, yeah. In, 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 you know, in elementary school. And so, yeah, she gets a lot of uh, praise that from parents to see their children working with their hands and, and you know, making books. Absolutely. Like that, yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Um, so when you first moved to, uh, I, I guess, where you live now, is this where you've lived since yes. you moved so, out of the Bronx? So, yes, when I moved out of the Bronx, I wound up, you know, Florida, Puerto Rico, and wound up here yeah. on, on Broadway. Sure. On 108th Street with my brother Dan. Yeah. And helped him raise his two kids. <laughs> 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 well, their mother, because, uh, you know, the, the, my brother had, they were separated, and so the kids would come and spend time with Danny, and then with Marsha. So, so we were all family. Marsha sure. came for all of their birthdays. 
when we had our Christmas dinners, I think Marsha was there. Yeah. Marsha was our family, and it was just, you know, there uh, for whatever reason. Uh, but so we were all together, and Marsha lived three, three blocks away. Right. Yeah, three blocks okay. away. Okay, wow, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so we were in each other's houses, you know, the kids. So uh, that was uh, their experience. But my brother Danny got me the apartment. Which I still have. Wow. Which you know, a lot of people would hope that I leave. <laughs> <laughs> like the landlord, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. It's a co-op building. I'm the last tenant there. Oh uh, wow. The the neighbors are, are there. The owners, you know, want to sell. Of course, yeah, yeah. 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 Wow, wow. So I wound up yeah back here in Manhattan, and never went back to the Bronx. Yeah. 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 Um, so just to uh, get some of your impressions, uh, what do you remember most about Danny? About Danny? Yeah. Oh my gosh, for me, he was, he was my, he, he's the one that got me through a lot of, um, um, a lot of issues and insecurities and he, he was just my mentor, uh, you know, my, my brother Mario, you know, was there, but then he was, I was closest to him. Yeah. So I loved his, his, uh, his, um, his quick, you know, way of, of his wit. Yeah, and, yeah. And how he would easily turn things around. And of course he encouraged me that I wound up not only going to Bolivar College, but going to Columbia. He was so proud. Of sure. Me. And he was always there for me. He yeah. was very there. He was there for me. Uh, you know, I had anxiety attacks. I could call him at three o'clock in the morning. He was yeah. two, two seconds. He was there. You know, he was the brother that really, you know, I I leaned on. Yeah. A lot and learned a lot from him. You know, um, except that I can't tell his jokes. I don't know how to be as witty. <laughs> you know, I try. I said, "How do you come up with these things?" You know, and, and he would laugh. You know, so yeah, it, it, he he was very dear, and he's missed. And and um, I, um, to be honest, I didn't know how I was going to stay living in that building. Yeah. So, because it's hard for me to be there without him. Absolutely. I, I lost my my you know my ceiling. <laughs> you know. You lose your parents and your mother, father. You start the ceiling starts to, you know, disappear. And I felt like he's looking over me, and you know. Yeah. So yeah, I was we were very close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, we both, you know, were because we were here in the city. We took care of our parents. Absolutely. My in Florida. My, my brother's uh, family lives in the Bronx. My older brother lives in, uh, you know, in, uh, in Suffern. And uh, mm. so. We were connected that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, yeah, I think, I think, I've covered all the questions oh. that I had in <laughs> in my mind. There, I'm sure there's much, much more that you could share. Um, is there anything that occurs to you right now that you'd like to share? Um, um, no, not, you know, I think what I've said. Uh, when I think that we're sitting here in Columbia. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know, and absolutely. I used to bring them to play here. Yeah. Danny, yeah. Danny would say, come on, let's go for a walk. And they would, the kids would be playing here. I never thought I would wind up, wind up working and going to school here. Yeah. So I, the thought just came back as I look at the alma mater. Yeah. <laughs> I said, here I'm back at Columbia. Yeah. I, I, I've retired now for five years. And... Um, had a great, you know, work experience here. Columbia. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, I loved working with the faculty. I learned a lot from them. They were scientists. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah. And whenever, I, sometimes I run into them, they're happy to see me. Yeah. They would like for me to be back at work. <laughs> I, I I'm sure you're missed. Yeah. Proposals and budget. So, yeah. yeah. So, it, it, it's nice to be back here and, and to talk. Excuse me, to talk um, about, you know, you brought up a lot of memories. It, it, it was nice to go over that again. Yeah. Good, good. Yeah, that's that's what I, I hope for. <laughs> <laughs> um, Aviva, would you like to touch on anything now? Or? Wow. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> when I was born. Okay. <laughs> um, well, it's just... Said this already, but the, it's that's a, like a, that's amazing context. Yeah. Right. 
from from the from our family's historical context around why it is that my father identified as Puerto Rican and where the, the points of struggle were. Right? Yeah, yeah. And like, what would fuel him to be part of the Young Lords? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And what would enable him to partner with? You know, a Barnard and Columbia graduate. Yeah. Right? A, a white woman who lived in Manhattan, right? So the sort of the, the like, how could that even be possible? And what, you know, what, what was happening in the Bronx, like, right? Like the, 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 the soup and the water that was starting to boil. Yeah, um, yeah. Like super powerful. So I, that, like, I just feel like you've just laid a whole foundation for the little bit that I understand, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, yeah, just one thing about the Young Lords. I remember I, I wasn't involved, and Danny didn't talk to me a lot about it, except to say that they wanted to do something good. You know, yeah. How, he, he started to, uh, you know, bring to my consciousness, you know, yeah, we're not treated equal. We're not treated. Yeah. But see, I, I didn't experience as much racism as my brothers did. Right? Sure. It was darker than I was. Sure, I sure. I experience it in high school. Oh, absolutely. Because, because my counselor thought, you know, well, you know, don't don't even bother going to Learn how to change diapers. Yeah. Don't, yeah, yeah. Don't, you know, college for you, you know, that's not going to happen. Um, so, you know, but Danny was such a pacifist. You yeah. Know? And, I, and I remember thinking, you know, people would say the young lords are gang, but he, he would tone that down. You know, he said, we we're here to help our community and to bring, you know, uh, uh, to light that a lot of Hispanic kids and, and black children suffer in these schools, you Absolutely. know, being treated differently. And uh, those like my friend John McCord, who went on to become principal of Trinity uh, College, uh, you know, wow. those, those are success stories. His parents were. His, his mom was a, a nurse, his father was a, a co- worked in the post office, but they, they valued education. Yeah. And yeah, he went through a lot of um, racism. He would tell me, you know, Absolutely. Him and his brother. Or, so yeah, you know, to, to see that there wasn't the, 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 the anger, but the, right. the, the moving forward of more positive. Don't dwell on the anger, you know, how can we change this? Yeah, that, yeah. That I remember from Danny yeah. always talking, because I would say, don't you get angry? Yeah. You know, and you know, look at what they're doing. And he says, you know, you got the solutions. You just got to work on that. And and it's very slow going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's slow going. But there's also a thread that Uncle Mario was talking about yesterday. Like you're hearing a little bit about how my father supported Lydia in some ways. Um, and like during all this, there's also the feminist movement happening, right? Which sure, my sure. My mother was definitely a piece of that. Well, first of all, to have when you think about where where you and where my father grew up, um, the, all the ingredients were there to have a very machismo ethic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, right. right. And right. there was something, we were just hearing some stories about his role in the Young Lords, that he actually was really close to a lot of women in the Lords. And I know that that's part of yes. how they broke. Yeah. And what was described to me was he wasn't close to them right. because he wanted romantic relationships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. close to them because he really, like, I actually imagine, right? Yeah. He understood that they yeah. had a lot to offer yes. and probably some different things, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And that was actually rare in yes. the culture of oh, the young boys. Absolutely. Yes. So there's absolutely. something that That's there's right. something in all these ingredients yes. that you do you know the, the Yes. No, no because right? my brother that enabled that. My older brother, Mario, was talking about that because there was my the my, our household there were fights or arguments that we were exposed to as kids. That had a lot to do. My father wasn't this. I had friends whose fathers were yeah. machismo. Yeah. yeah. You know, the mother, you know, sweating yeah. and, 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 but that's not the experience we had. I For see. For whatever yeah. reason, yeah. there was a lot of respect, um, you know, there. And so I think they, as the oldest, saw that. Yeah. And my sister. So not marrying. For my sister, a man that would, you know, be abusive. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't there. My father said, I never laid a hand on you guys. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is not something. So now that I think of it, it's right, true. Right, there's it's wow. something, right? There's, yeah. It, it, I didn't think that of it then. doesn't just happen? No. Like, yeah, yeah, right. So in a way, my brothers were always very, uh, yet like my brother Mario also belonged to a lot of organizations. He was with women. He, 
you know, men would say things. Oh, yeah. look her, you know, and he, he says, no, that's not what we're here for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. kind of thing, so you're right. Wow. Also, like, when you, when, you, when you listen to the threads, right, there's something about the women in our family. Yes. And mm. I, 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 My grandmother you know, the, the left story, her husband. Well, yeah, the, yeah, as she wouldn't put up with the here. nonsense. And your mm. grand, right? And I, as mother, protected her from yes. the Spanish soldiers, right? right? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's yeah. a violent threat. Yes. Right? Yes. And the women who have to protect their yes. daughters, yes. which is just real. Yes. But there's something else, right? There's mm. something. So, I don't know. I don't yeah. know much about that, but that, that speaks to how it is in my my. My father and my mother could be together. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, there was no, uh, my, my parents never, ever talked about, you can't have a friend of this color. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, you know, only if they're bad, they have to be good. If they're yeah. bad, we don't want them here. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And so never was there any color barrier. Now, now you know, right. yeah. So seeing a white person or a black person, or, it, 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 you know, it, it wasn't as, as like, oh, we can't talk to you sure. or, you know, we can't associate with you. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah. That's yeah. very true. Um, and, uh, yeah. And, and, and when I think about my grandmother, it took a lot of guts for her to leave Puerto Rico. Absolutely. Uh, she, she worked in one of the first cig cigarettes, cigar factories. I did a paper oh, on this one. Okay, yeah, but, yeah. You know, Puerto Rico and Cuba was known for the artisans, you know, rolling up, you know, their their tobacco. This was a this was their big thing. And of course when the the war when the Americans came in, they saw how can we make more money? Let's still factories. <laughs> <Yeah>. And uh, <laughs> and so that that art was dying, but they hired women because they felt they had uh, uh, thinner thinner yeah. fingers and more and so my grandmother was working in this factory, and one of the things she said that uh, they would hire some, they call them readers. I was just going to ask you about yeah, this. Yeah, 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 yeah. They yeah. call them readers, because I used to say to her, how you know a lot about politics? You know, the president. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, she said, the president's talking, you know, the, yeah, the governor was bad, and I said, how she said, oh, we, we learned from, you know, that we read about what's happening in Europe, what's happening yeah. in, the, in the United States. It's amazing. And, as they're rolling cigarettes, she did catch her finger in one of the machines, so she she had a little, um, yeah. she, she could never, you know, her finger was broken here. So it was always crooked. Was, how did that happen? She, well, she tells the whole story. Yeah. I was rolling to sit, you know, the cigars and things, and they also smoked. Oh, it's sure, nothing. sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Little, little tiny eye with the big <laughs> can, you, can you just tell them about how she would give you, she, you were special, so she would ask you Oh, yes. Store. So, <laughs> when we were growing up, and, and so, and this is when, this is all before these laws came up. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she would, in the, so she would say to me, you know, she would give me a, 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 a nickel. I think it was like, go, go get me three cigarettes. Yeah. Don't tell anyone because you're the only one that knows. <laughs> you're the special one. And me with my secret, I would go to the corner store, yeah. get three cigarettes and sell it to a five-year-old. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I would come up with the cigarettes in my pocket and hide it. And when she would meet me at the door, she would put it in her apron. <laughs> I can remember smelling the, the cigarette. Now, when I think about it, I run home from school and hug her. That's what I would smell. Yeah, wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so you know, years years pass, and one day I'm talking with, with your dad and we're talking about my grandmother. I used to say, you know, she used to make you go get cigarettes and talk. You're kidding. You tell me the same thing. All of us. You're my favorite. You're my favorite. All of you. Yes. And, and um, oh you know, my God. I, I have to say that this is funny because, you know, Brian Stevenson, the yes. lawyer, yep. Just yep. Mercy, yep. The, yep. the lawyer who wrote the book. Yep. Just, mm. Exactly. He tells a story about his grandmother saying to each of them that they were special. <laughs> Not to buy cigarettes, but to say, you know, I'm only speaking to you yeah. because you're the smart one. Yeah. And you're going to do really good things in your life and then she would take the sibling yeah and so when they grew up they said i thought i was very <laughs> and so i said wow wow it's a good strategy yeah, yeah. 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 What a, you know what a good thing and in our case it was buying the cigarettes but you know but you felt special yeah, yeah I, felt, right. I felt very oh my god the secret and she would say and, and I, one day she made me angry about something. I said, I'm going to tell mommy about it. I said, no, no, remember you. You're the special. <laughs> because I would get, she would say something to me or I had to do something and I would get upset. I, I used to threaten her. Little did I know that, you know, all of us were in the same secret society. <laughs> wow, that's too good. <laughs> 
so yeah, that was that was so that, yeah, remembering that, yeah. So yeah, our childhood, you know, we, we, we didn't know we were poor. Yeah. You know, we were very fortunate. For my mother's never worked. You know, she was so, she stayed home. My father, whatever he made, my mother budgeted the money. So I guess sure. I started the budgeting. Sure. You know, just sit there and budget the money and say this is for this, and then you know oh, from Aya and the grocery store. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The lineage of that. Yeah. yeah. And so she would always say to me, you know, the most important thing is to have a roof over your head and food. Nothing else matters. Yeah. No clothing and things. But you know, so so because she managed well, and my father was willing. You know, also probably did come from a family that that were that he experienced any kind of uh, violence against women. Yeah. Uh, he liked that of my mother. Absolutely, and yeah. And there was a time that his brother would say to him, why do you let your wife tell you what, you know, because his brother was more of, not, not um, but in, in terms of where your role was. Okay, I you see, know, yeah. You, you're, you're the woman, you cook for me, you, you take care of the child, you iron my clothes. My, my father ironed our clothes. Yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah. My brother ironed his coat. Yeah. My brothers yeah. all learned how to cook. That's yeah. Because of my brother, and my so, father. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. he says, you never have a wife. He says, because, and, and now that I think about it, he says, the wives are supposed to sew your shoes. And they, they were all, I would see them sewing uh, their socks. Yes. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Our socks out they sure, have sure. Yeah, yeah, just sew it up. <laughs> and, and, they, and they knew how to sew. And yeah. Because my father would sew his yeah. thing. Wow. I don't know where he picked it up from. Yeah. But, you know, and he ironed. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, so they didn't, see, they, they didn't see any embarrassment to that. Sure. I, I guess if you speak to my older, you know, maybe their friends said, are you kidding? Yeah. I'm not going to cook or, you know. Although that's changing now. When you see, sure, you know, sure. But, but at that time, it was not uh, the thing men did. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's very few people that I've interviewed who remember their father's cooking. Yeah. Except maybe, you know, once in a blue moon, a, something special here or there. But, yeah. 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 So, yeah, no, that's the, the household. So we never really complained. We had nothing to complain about. We didn't know about having a car. We didn't know about traveling. Yeah. You know? yeah. But a lot of the people in the neighborhood were in the same boat. You know, sure. that like... Uh, who was it that was saying, I think it was my friend Ellen, I have a very good friend, Ellen Goldberg, she grew up in the West Bronx. They were watching out who had the new car of mm. that year. Yeah. I said, I don't even know what car, how, how things, you know, just survive, that she survived. I mean, she, they could have all gotten killed in that village. Yeah. You know? um, and, and they went through a lot of, you know, uh, hard times. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, yeah. yeah. Vieques alone has had to put up with so, with so much, but the the, the main the, the large island yes. of Puerto Rico, yes. is the same 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 kind of story. It's well, they, crazy. They, what what did they do? They they would you know test bombs, and and I you know after the the hurricane Maria, I remember seeing a documentary where people they are trying to grow things again, you know, grow, have their, their little yes. farm areas, and, and I'm thinking for this, that ground safe, you know. I know, uh, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Because, you know, these, all these little uh, other islands that were used as, as sites to test these horrible toys. I know, yeah, so, I know. Um, yeah, so I got a little bit more uh, closer to my, my, my Hispanic, you know, uh, ancestry sure uh, when I think of, of my mother's aunts and and their you know I try to go back as far my father from Cuba I know very little he came here when he was young and um, and was on his own he had a twin brother um, and he just would say that people you know under the I think it was Trujillo, uh, uh, was, Batista was, maybe? Batista, Batista, yeah, yeah. So, Trujillo is Dominican. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they've all been down. U.S. Islands, US yeah. dictator, puppet yeah. dictators in yeah. all of the islands, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, he said it was horrible. Yeah. And uh, so they were raised with by some family because they lost their, their mother young. Uh, they were like nine years old. And uh, so for them to come, for him to also be here, and for my parents, they literally met in Central Park. Wow. My mother was uh, here uh, skating with, with her cousin, and my father would whistle at her. She said, 
and, uh, and so they, they, you know, and he, and so her and a friend, and him and a friend, you know, they, they would ask permission of my grandmother, you know, because my father says, oh no, I have to ask your father. I don't, my father's not here. My mother's here. So you know, that's how they they met. And, uh, Wow, well, I was better skates. Yes. yes. <laughs> my, my, my mother was, you know, was very, a very fortunate little girl in Puerto Rico because her aunt took over raising them. My grandmother always felt like she, she you know, they, they wanted to dress her. They wanted yeah. to. So my mother turned out to be a little materialistic, but that's why she said, oh, no, this brand is better than this brand, you know? Sure, sure. Yeah, so that kind of thing. But, yeah, my mother was very athletic, very yeah. athletic. She played in her high school uh, basketball. She, she, They still have her trophy from her piano oh. concert. Yeah. Yeah, uh, when we moved there, she, I took her to her high school, and she said, there's the trophy. Wow. And, you know, and that was in the 70s, so I don't know if, she, if, if it's still there. But, you know, so believe me, you know, I, I, so they, they had beautiful concerts and uh, they, so they gave her lots of lessons and, yeah. you know, so, um, but yeah. So, so, that's, yeah. so you moved back to her hometown when you, when you went to Puerto Rico with Yes, your... when, when we decided, when I decided to leave the Bronx um, and my father, uh, from my sister who was living in Florida, he thought, well, maybe it's time that we leave New York. Yeah, you know? yeah. He, he was also afraid of what was going on. Sure. Uh, a lot of people, older people getting held up. Yeah, you know? yeah, and, yeah. Uh, our building had become, uh, once where this building, if as a child, if they caught us playing in the grass area, yeah. they would they would send a, a letter to your parents. They knew who, whose family, whose kids, and my mother would yell at us say, they, they find her five dollars. Oh my God! <laughs> don't play in the grass, you know. And they have security walking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking care of the of the of the the area. The the grass is you know beautiful. Yeah. You know, I mean, everything was clean. There was no broken bottles or cans or paper. It, it, there was no such thing. And so she would say, you know. But so when we moved to Florida, my parents didn't adjust there. And so we said, why don't we go to Puerto Rico? And thinking that my mother would be, my father was thrilled, but my mother, for some reason, preferred to be here in New York. Mm. But being in Puerto Rico five years, we yeah. were there, I got to see places in San Juan where she played. Sure. Uh, you know, uh, places at her school, you know, and just walking up and down streets where my her aunt, my second aunt, had her store. Oh, sure, sure, yeah. sure. So it was, it was, it was Who nice. Had store, not Coco. No, he's not right. Okay. He's not right. Coco is her sister. Okay. Which I'm named after. Her. My mother had just one sister. My mother was the oldest, and then in between, unfortunately, miscarriages. And my younger aunt. Mm. Yeah. So. Um, but uh, yeah, my my mother's sister stayed in Puerto Rico. Oh, I see, yeah, I see. Never, never. Only when she was young, when my grandmother came, that they were both young. Yeah. Once my aunt graduated from high school, she went back to Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah. okay, and so okay. So my I mother see. stayed here. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but yeah, she uh, really loved her her idol. You know, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So when 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 she went to live with her aunts, was that in San Juan? Yeah. Okay. Well, so. my mother was. Well, my my when my grandmother met this young man, turned out to be the brother of these sisters. Oh. So, okay. Okay. So they moved. In, they lived in San Juan, and uh, so they they moved there. The, the, my grandmother and her partner. Um, they weren't married at the time. They married later. Oh, okay, um, sure. And there was a beautiful picture of their wedding, but it got burned in the Bronx. Oh. In, uh, on Je uh, Westchester Avenue, there was a, a famous photographer place, and they would retouch. So it was it was her and her husband, and, and oh, it was no. an oval, you know, frame like they yeah. used to have. And my grandmother took it to get the frame fit and the plate from Oh, her. that's terrible. And so, and I remember seeing that picture in her room. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, it, it, it was like, she was so sad, you know, she said. But, um, so, they they lived with the sisters. There was, it was a, a, those big apartments or something. Mm. Were, so, when I went to visit, my mother showed me that it was it was cut up into little apartments. I see. But yeah, I see. But yeah. she said no. It was like the kitchen was built. They had five rooms, you know. 
and um, there still wasn't running water, or they, they had to, they had some running water somewhere, but so, and then they, they decided to move to San Dulce, where they built the house, my mother's aunt built the house, and that's where my, at that time my grandmother decided to leave her husband and come to me. Oh, okay, okay, I see, yeah, sure, right? sure. So I'm bringing my daughters. Sure. So this is all, you know, my mother was born 1910 to 1920, 1930. Okay, yeah. So she was like in her, she was older than Google, so she was in her late teens. She had finished high school. Late teens, I see, yeah, I see. So she was like 17 when she came to New York. Sure, and sure. She loved it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess she, so, yeah, she right? She fell in love with Central Park. She just loved her, you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so did you did you ever go back to your grandma's village at all when you I were in did. Puerto Rico? I did. I actually drove her back to oh, meet one of her. Oh, wow. Yes, I, I drove her to visit one of her um, half-sisters. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, because at town... Now that I realize, and I have a, a cousin that I speak with now and now and then, and her daughter's doing a family thing. Yeah. So my grandmother had an older sister, who, uh, so that was that older sister. That's my cousin's family. That's uh -huh. uh, her her oh, grandma. Yeah. So it's her grandmother and my grandmother. We yeah. keep comparing notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, do you know that uh, our great grandfather? <laughs> probably had a lot of, you know, knew a lot of people. Yeah. So he had children with another woman. And so they all knew about my grandmother. Mm. They, they saw, somehow knew each other. And when I took her, that was the, the, the last time that they saw each other. And I saw the likeness, you know, my husband, her. these are older sisters than my grandmother. Sure. And they look so much like her. Wow. And so, yeah, so I got to see the town. Dirt roads. Yeah. Dirt roads. To Alta. Yeah. Um, it's, it, my, my cousin says it's better, now. you know, uh -huh. it's pay, more pavements and, and the houses are different. But sure. it was still like very old wooden houses. I remember they asked us in for coffee and they were looking at me like, you know, like, you know, you're, so you're my grandmother's, my mother's, you know, you're her daughter. And yeah. I said, yes. And so my grandmother was so happy. Yeah, yeah. I That's wonderful. That. But I didn't explore the town, sure. which I would like to do. Sure, yeah. sure. Now that my cousin has, you know, her daughter's doing this kind of, you know, we want to know who their mother. I know that my grandmother's mother was uh, my my mo my grandmother brought her to live with her at at a late age. Yeah. And uh, so what happened was that when she was living with her sister-in-laws and. And uh, she would tell her husband, I want to get my mother. I want to yeah. take her out of that town. And so finally, you know, they went. And her mother came and lived with them. My, my mother was seven years old when the Spanish flu hit. Oh, so wow. both my grandmother and her mother were sick. And mm. they were kept in a separate room. Yeah. And so they were, my, my grandmother survived, but her mother died. Wow. And so my grandmother would come. She tells me that story. She said, she only stayed with me for two years, you know, three years, and she died. But wow. she loved her. Apparently, that was a good mother to them, you know. Yeah. And so um, that I remember, very sad. Wow. That, uh, that when that influenza hit everywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. Um, and, yeah, so. But, yeah, I, I'm so proud of my family. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we're Absolutely. Not scientists or rocket scientists, but, but it's a nice story that of survival, perseverance. Absolutely. You know? And uh, it's, it's you know it's a pretty big family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When when you were growing up in the Bronx, um, what are some of the uh, uh, say like sounds or music that you remember hearing in the neighborhood? Um, I not not a lot. Okay, not a lot. Um, uh, you know, radios sometimes. Sure. You know, radios going, you know. And but, what would you listen to? Well, in my house, we listen to like the Hit Parade, things like that. Sure. Um, um, we were, uh, the, 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 the fun things I remember was we had a little grocery store in the corner. And on Saturdays, we were given like a 10 cents or a nickel. And we used to buy little bag of potato chips and a little bottle of Coca-Cola. Okay, that was our yeah. treat. Um, yeah, you know, interesting you asked that because my 
when, when my parents got the first TV, that I remember. I must have been about five. Okay, yeah. I feel or something. Yeah. And, um, and my mother would put on all these shows. So I, I wound up with watching, you know, Cowboys and, and uh, comedy shows that they had. Sure. At that time. My mother loved those. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, so when we were allowed to watch TV, you know, th those were the things. But no, I didn't grow up with a lot of music. My mother played piano. Okay, Mostly yeah. church things. I see, I see. But, you know, my my little recordings were of fairy tales. Oh, okay, okay, know? okay sure, yeah. yeah. So I remember uh, listening to some fairy tale. My mother would buy these big records that had stories. Mm -hmm. you, know, you put the record on and it said, turn the page. You know, <laughs> yeah, the yeah, yeah. And then you follow what, you know, what, what, what was going on. Um, that's my earliest record. Sure, yeah. sure. And uh, what about food that you remember most growing yeah, up? Yeah, um, we ate very well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mother was into trying everything, but it was so important for her, for us to see different colors. Sure. So we had, we were eating spinach and, and string beans and potatoes and then the chicken or the pork chop and then, you know, some rice and beans, but we sure. were eating spaghetti or meatloaf. So it was always different than a lot of my friends yeah. whose parents cooked traditional rice and beans, you know, almost every day. With sure. Them. But at holidays, we would have the traditional Puerto Rican meal. Absolutely, yeah, Definitely yeah. Definitely with pasteles and, yeah. and pork and the rice and the beans. That was a, a tradition. But, sure. But day-to-day -day food, we were eating a lot of different, you know, uh, types of food, Italian. And um, because my mother liked, you know, she liked experimenting with yeah. food. But she made a, her, her own cake and ice cream. So wow. for our birthdays, that, that's what we had. And if we, one or two friends would come over, um, you know, have a little birthday. And uh, she did her own, you know, uh, desserts for, for many years. For sure. Us. So, uh, Italian came from our way, though, no? Uh, yeah, actually, my father was befriended by Italians who, when he came here, yeah. and his story is, is, you know, he wound up, I think, in Florida, worked himself up through the South. Yeah. So he came here to Long Island. And he was working, doing um, landscaping. Okay, sure. At people's houses. And he also worked as a great boy. Okay, yeah. So it was, and and uh, he, his, his, that was his life. His brother was more, uh, they both went to high school, but his brother, I think, went to college because he became an interpreter. Oh, okay. So, so we always said that my father was a laborer, but he befriended Italians and he learned how to cook Italian. Yeah, I remember Italian. Aviva oh. telling me some of that, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we, he had. Rosto and Manuel and Calamaro. Yeah. That's funny. So, now, so when we were in St. Mary's Projects, is where my father, I remember him cooking more of the of the Italian meals. He would make dishes like octopus salad with wow. and you know, and so oh, my friends would find it funny. <laughs> they wouldn't touch it, they wouldn't eat. I would say, "Oh, well, what did you eat today?" I said, "We had, we had uh, octopus and squid," and they go, "Oh, how can you eat that?" You know, and um, so, but my neighbor Joe McCord downstairs, yeah. they would rush up, and, said, <laughs> and they said the first thing we smell is garlic. Yeah, yeah. Right. you know, it's like people didn't use garlic, you know, in, in, in American. Oh, food. absolutely, yeah, American for food. sure. So yeah. my father with the garlic, and he, you know. And, and then he would make the spaghetti and meatballs. And then he would say, is your mother around? No, he put wine inside the <laughs> <laughs> My mother was not a drinker. My father liked his wine. And um, so, yeah, so we became uh, traditionally just eating a lot of Italian yeah. Wow, uh, yeah. meals and uh, lasagna. And then my older brother went to cooking school because that was when they were putting them in trade school. Yeah. He sure. taught us how to make, you know, uh, meatloaf and how to make, you know, pot roast. Things that, you know, a little different than, than 
my mother said, oh, we make that too. Yeah, yeah. So we ate a lot of codfish called bacala. Oh, sure, sure. And so that was our, our meals. Yeah. Know? So they were, they were pretty good. Yeah, yeah. sounds like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did, did your father ever cook any uh, Cuban dishes? or? He didn't cook rice or beans, but he insisted on getting black beans. Okay. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I see. So, yeah, yeah. So we, we, we alternated between red beans, which is more like the, the, the Puerto Rican, sure. and the black beans. Sure. And my mother loved the black beans. Oh, so, right. yeah, so it was perfect. Yeah. Wow, yeah. wow. They, they would talk about, you know, my island is more beautiful than yours. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say, so what are we, a Cuban or Puerto Rican? And, you know, <laughs> so that, those questions came up. Sure. You know? And um, so, but that we knew more about Puerto Rico and more of my mother's family, we tended to move that way. Absolutely. My father had very few except his brother. And a younger brother that that was in the merchant marine. Well, oh, they all left okay. Cuba. Yeah. You know, when they were, were of age, and uh, and my father had to become a naturalized citizen. He was working in a factory when World War Two broke out. Ah. So the the uh, manager or whatever they called the boss said, if you're not a U.S. citizen, they'll deport you. So yeah. his brother had been telling him, get your papers, become a citizen. And my mother would say the same thing, so he kept pushing it off until that time happened. And wow. He, he, right away, he, I had those papers. Yeah. I, I had his naturalization papers. And so his fact, the factory turned into um, making things for the war. Sure. But right after that, he, he so after the war is when he got the job at the school. Okay, okay, so yeah. So it was, yeah, so to make it, you know, so yeah, they, because when they moved to the Bronx, we, I, I was born there, so... I only remember it like when I was five, uh, you know, and uh, this, so I didn't live there. I lived there till like seven or eight. Okay, okay. That's when we moved. I so see. So that's why I don't have a lot of recollection there. Sure. Um, except my grandmother, when it was time for me to go to kindergarten, she took my hand and said, I'll walk you to school. She walked up the street, cross over here, look for the cars, go this way. And there's the school. Yeah. And I was on my own from then. <laughs> because my brother Sammy didn't want to walk with me. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So it was like, really? The next day I go by myself? <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you remember there being any other Cubans aside from your father that were in the neighborhood? Or was he uh, pretty much the only says one? Yes. My okay. brother said there were Dominicans and there were other Cubans. I, you know, because he was much older. He, sure. You know, uh, so he knew of them yeah but uh the friends that i had to me they were all puerto rican the yeah. girls yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Who, who jumping rope and things like that yeah and um you've just given this amazing context there about why my father identified, identified as puerto rican as puerto rican yes yeah, yeah. So, we didn't so want to make our father feel bad right. so my older brother identified no, as Puerto yeah he does oh yeah. i see yeah. okay okay yeah, yeah. And, I mean, not to make my father feel bad, but we used to feel like, Pop, you don't feel bad, right? You yeah. Know, it's all the same. It's yeah. All the same. You know, <laughs> except for the beans. <laughs> <laughs> except for the beans. And and the names of different fruits. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and she would say, no, it's naranja. No, it's, you know. I forget how they call it in Cuba, but the, the, the names were different. Of sure. The fruits, you know. But my father, when we moved to Puerto Rico, he loved it. It, it was like, I guess it reminded him of, you know, being in Cuba. Yeah. And he never went back. Oh, know? okay, yeah. yeah. So, uh, my, your, your dad had a chance to go on a study trip. Sure. Uh, to visit hospitals yeah. and, and Okay, things. yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so yeah. my father was like, how was it, how was it, you know? Yeah. What, what was you know, but, but Danny didn't really get to travel around the island. Sure. You know, so, yeah. But um, the, uh, yeah, the sad part that they they all his brother never got to go back, and, oh, they, and okay. they, they you know they remember Cuba. Yeah. Then, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. At least I know I've I've heard a lot of stories in the Bronx of uh, again about the music in the Bronx, it seems like um, Cubans played such a formative role in a lot of the, the Puerto Rican musicians, you know, they would learn, say, different styles of, of drumming. I mean, yes. they, they were traditional Puerto Rican styles yes. of drumming, but they would learn the Afro-Cuban rhythms, yes. and all of that yes. made it into yeah. mambo, salsa, yes. everything yes. beyond. And my brother was very, my older brother, Mario, he can speak with you. He's a, he has a history of music, and he also... Yeah. 
yeah. lived with and, and, and knew personally some of the, uh, you know, Palmieri. Oh, and sure, sure. Pacheco. Oh, wow, uh, Pacheco yeah. Pacheco actually lived across the street from us. Ah. Yeah, so they were friends. I remember seeing these big, tall guys coming to the apartment, you know, they, they, but I didn't know who they were. Yeah, like, yeah. He, so he would say, yeah, I know, Pacheco came and ate with us a lot. <laughs> and I think he, he's Dominican. Yeah. And so I, I thought he was Puerto Rican, but he's Dominican. So my brother was influenced and, and knows music, and he's a, a, a library of music. And wow, he can yeah. tell you which, you know, where... As my cousin, my older cousin, that they were they were rivals because they would say, "Well, I, do you remember so and so?" And oh, he came from you know from this part of, of, of Cuba. Or, yeah. You know, so yeah, he had, he's a very very uh, he, his library of music is very um, uh, I don't want to say intense, but very big. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, he often tells me. I, I was, I, in fact, we were talking about, because I love Tony Bennett. I said, oh, you know, this is a song I like of Tony Bennett. He says, that was written by a Mexican. Wow. And I said, what? <laughs> and then I, I, I challenged, I went and looked up the Mexican, and true enough, it's in Spanish, but Tony Bennett sang it in, in English. Yeah. And, but it's to say, it was his song. Wow. His so that's how good he is when, when I say, you know, he says, some of these music comes from a lot of, you know, Hispanic, you know, uh, countries. Absolutely. But the Cuban, see, I, I wasn't there, we were, I, I grew up with rock and roll. Oh, sure, okay. sure, absolutely. So yeah. I wasn't there, and and, the, and when I was in St. Mary's Project is when the, the salsa and the mambo and all that was going on, but I was too young to go to dance hall sure, like my brother, sure. but there was a dance hall in the Bronx that let us go in on Sunday mm. for a dollar, and you would see Eddie come there. Like, you would see all these top known stars playing for teenagers. Yeah, Hunts Point Palace, was yes. that the one? Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, and I'm trying to, and I remember that I felt guilty because I would tell my mother I'm not going to church. <laughs> <laughs> and there were many of us sitting at a table saying, if my mother catches me, of course, one mother did find her daughter. Uh-oh. She came under the table, where is she, where is she? And we're she saying, we have seen her, and yeah. she found her and dragged her out of there. Oh my God. But it was very, there was no drinking that I remember. I never drank, you know, uh, we were 15, 16. Yeah. That's when the Latin exploded, the music. Yeah. But I grew up with um, Elvis Presley. And, sure, you know, sure. The, the doo wop. The doo wop, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, Danny yeah. did too. Yeah. Well, Mario. Yeah. yeah. Mario yeah. got into the Spanish music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, and, and he he knows the recording. He knew Joe Quijano, who, mm. you know, made it, didn't make it. Yeah. Joe Quijano then moved to Puerto Rico, started his own recording. And I used to go then in Puerto Rico. I would go to the um, big bands. Yeah, yeah, sure. I, I would go. I mean, it was it was a lot of fun. There wasn't any nonsense of what's happening now. You know, with kids getting drugs and things like that. So we would just stay at a dance and have a good time. Yeah, there was drinking, you know, but but there wasn't that, you know, that the the the, the harassment that you see now in places. So. Yeah, so that's why I don't remember too much of that sure. early Bronx sure. uh, in, in that area, Jackson Avenue. The, the projects in Brooklyn Boulevard were also very short. Uh, it was, it was um, so I was like 9 to 11 that we lived sure. here. Uh, and then we moved back to the South Bronx. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I'm, I can't remember which name it is, but I know at least one or two of the big doo groups uh, the all-female ones the, were at Morris High School, yes, or some the, of them the, went. The, the Sorrells. The, the, the Chant Chantel, Chantels. Chantels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The original album. Oh. And my brother Sammy was in class with one of the singers. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah, we wild. We love their music. Yeah, and yeah. We, and and the album that shows the jukebox and kids leaning on it. Yeah. That was us. You yeah. Know? We, we we talk about getting to school early. It wasn't to go to school. It was to go to the jukebox. Play a couple of songs before school started. Did you do box in the school? No, in the oh. corner store. Oh. So we would meet up there and play our music, and then you know when it's time to go to school, we would then have to. This is Morris High School, Boston Road. Yeah. There, there was a, a, a candy store, something with a jukebox. Oh, it's a community center. When yeah, when you go have the candy store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah so in the Santels, the Santels. 
And so they were ahead of me in school. Okay, so sure, brother, sure. Yeah. But he says, oh, this is, you know, what's her name? She was in my class. And so we have, um, I have the original album. Wow. Uh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I have Little Anthony Imperial because my brother Sammy also collected record albums and, and lots of, uh, you know, records that we had. I sure. Think. So, on our block, you can find parking all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. People I, in our building didn't know the Yeah, absolutely. I think that's most of the East and South Bronx yeah. at the time. I mean, wide open streets. Yeah, maybe, wide open streets. Maybe yeah. one car an hour yeah, or something. Yeah, we were... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We had the, the whole street, you know, our, our playground. And, uh, yeah, so that's, you know, that's, that's that was uh, my experience and my experience that, um, you know, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> um, yeah, so. <laughs> Anything else that occurs to you right now? No, I think I think that, uh, you know, I believe I just brought up that little thing and I said, that's true, you know, we grew up in a house that, that was pretty much, you know, we follow rules. Yeah. We follow the rules. Yeah. You know, but, but we were taken care of. Absolutely. Which is what a lot of kids, you know, that I think, I, I, you know, I, I don't think that, um, that we had that fear of not having someone at home, you know, yeah. after school, that was, you know, so, yeah, it was pretty safe, um, yeah, time. Yeah, and, you know, it's so interesting because it's time and time again, people who talk about, especially that part of the Bronx, when you grew up, whether they lived in the public housing or the tenements or, it, it's just time and time again, the theme is stability. And yeah. I think, you know, at least in so many media depictions of the Bronx, you don't hear anything about stability, but stable communities and yes, yes. tight knit communities. And yes. I mean, yes. it was there all through the fifties and sixties, and even in even in the seventies, in the worst of times. Yes, yes. Um, a lot of a lot in a lot of places. Right. Yeah, I don't know. You know exactly so, how the friendships that last. I mean, Joe McCord's daughter is really good friends with my brother. Yeah. Oh wow. These are, these are like. Yeah, so we, yeah we, we were family to stay yeah, yeah, together yeah. forever. Yeah. You know? I yeah. just lost him. Yeah. I mean, he has three brothers yeah. and two sisters. Uh, two other brothers and two sisters. And then his stability. daughter. Yeah. Really yeah. 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 Uh, she went to Barnard. And uh, she, yeah. But, um, no, we were, we were close. And, and, and the neighbors knew you. So, like, uh, you know, I think maybe Danny might have said, my brother Mario says this, that someone always knew where you were. Yeah. Not, not just your parents, but the person who just came out of the store. Yeah. Oh, there's Mario. Oh, yeah. there's Danny. Yeah. Listen, I saw your son, you know. Oh, that's okay. I sent him to the store. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. There was always someone watching out for you. Yeah, yeah. The, the person the... peeking out the window yes. that you probably yeah. didn't like at the time, but, <laughs> right, but right. looking back, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, yeah. she, kept, yeah. she kept watch, yeah. or he kept watch, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yes. you know, yeah. And, and so, but, you know, we were calling, oh, we don't want to come home we were sweaty and you know just all played out you know so yeah it, it um but you know when i think about the game you know <laughs> danny did like playing uh cowboy and indians i remember him we had fire escapes and climbing up the fire escape and things uh yeah the, the, he did a lot of outdoor playing and outdoor you know, sure things. so he must have been you know if mary was saying was Seven. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so, uh, but, but uh, we're six years, you know, so my, my older three siblings from the last one is six years apart, and then it was my brother Sammy and myself, and we did have a younger brother. So it was a different, also our experience with our parents, because my older siblings, remember my father taking them, bringing them to Central Park. Yeah. Oh, so never brought me to Central Park. sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and because they were older, you know, yeah. and so, Oh, Dad would take us to the movies if he never took us to the movies. So we were the, the last three. <laughs> so that we, we laugh about that a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you remember any movie theaters in your neighborhood? That's a question that just occurred to me. Any that you go to? The one on Prospect Avenue. Prospect Theater or RKO Franklin? RKO. I think yeah. Franklin was, maybe is what it's called. Yeah. On, around 149th Street, there was a theater there. I thought, uh, not, I never went to the Grand Clark course until I was a teenager. Oh, sure, sure. But there was, there was a movie house close to us that we used to walk to. And um, 
what was it called and what it was on Westchester Avenue mm. um, and I don't remember but we used to go there and see like you know for literally 50 cents two movies yeah. but I used to go there when I was young because my aunt would come and take me so I saw the ah. Hudson movie Coco? Yes. Yeah, Coco. my aunt lived in San yeah. oh yeah, okay okay aunt, okay yeah yeah when you come to visit I couldn't wait because th there was my movie night <laughs> you know she would take me to the movies and and I remember we went, this is, this is, uh, this, you know, of course, you know, he's digging my memory. Jay <laughs> Mansfield was there to promote a movie. And all I remember seeing the top of her head, this blonde. <laughs> and my aunt was like, that's Jay Mansfield. I didn't know who it was, but, yeah. you know, so, yeah. Doris I wonder, movies, yeah, well. I wonder if, 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 if they, they might have done their rounds at other movie theaters in the Bronx, but I think we have a picture in our collection, from what I remember of her at a movie theater in the Bronx. It might be that one. I'd have yeah, to, yeah, I'd have to look. But yeah. When I think about it now, so how many stars came to the Bronx to promote this yeah, story? Yeah. I mean, their movies. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. And, but she was, I mean, she was glamorous. You know, she was a tall woman. But all I remember was her blonde hair. Yeah. You know, and my my aunt was so excited. You know, she was so excited. Then, uh, yeah, so the movie house on Prospect Avenue, uh, you know, where the train turns. Okay. There, there was a, and I would go there because my sister had to take me wherever she went. And she didn't like that. So she was, and then the one further down where we lived. Sure. Um, and so th those are the two, you know, movie houses that we used to go to. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, a lot. Um, when I was with my aunt, and then later as a teenager. Sure, yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of the James Dean movies, and Elvis <laughs> <yeah. laughs> Presley movies. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. 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 So those were, yeah. yeah I have a, 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 a co-worker, unfortunately she passed away. She she was uh, much older, and uh, she, she would say, I went to the movies when to see, you know, when I see my black and white movies like Harry Grant, I see them on TV. She said, oh, we went to the theater to see them. <laughs> so they were just coming out. So she's going in the for early 40s. You know? Yeah. And, I, and so I'm saying, but here I'm saying, yeah, I went to the movies when they had this this movie coming out. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? They weren't on TV. Yeah. You know, as they, are, as they are now. Sure. But, yeah, so I used to say, really? You saw it on, in the movie? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so yeah, that that was fun to uh, to remember. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and, you know the projects did have gyms and uh, uh, they call them barrels and monkey bars. Okay, yeah. Before they were safe like they are now, so we did play a lot. <laughs> you know, we did play in there. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. The real art. <laughs> And we banged ourselves a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Other black and blue. <laughs> oh, great. Well, thank you so much for sharing everything sure. thank you. that you shared today. This has been wonderful. Yes. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you. That's been great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now.